Hello. Hi, I think we're live. Um, I apologise in advance, as I always do on these things, for any technical issues, but hopefully this is all going to run smoothly. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Charlie from Jellyfish Pictures, and I'm joined by Jeremy Smith, who's CTO of Jellyfish, and then Barry and Ben from Pixit Media. Um, they will be giving themselves a proper introduction soon. Um, we are holding a series of events for Jellyfish's 20th birthday and celebrating all the aspects that make up the success of the company. And one of the things that is really important to us are our tech partners and vendors, which is why we're here today. So, without further ado, hello. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Do you want to explain who picks it are? And, yeah, absolutely. Um, your relationship with Jellyfish. Yeah. So, um, uh, Thanks for having us here. Uh, I'm Ben Lever, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pixit Media. Um, uh, we've been working with Jellyfish now pretty much from the start of when we founded as a business. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we, we focus on software-defined um, data uh, infrastructure to meet creative workflows. That's the, the core of our business. Great. Have you got anything to add? Uh, you that also sounds great, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm Barry Evans. I'm the CTO and co-founder of uh, Pixit Media, and uh, yeah, exactly. We've been we've been working with Jeremy here uh, for uh, I think it's about ten years. Yeah, about ten yeah, years about now. 10 I think years. so. A bit, a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. Certainly yeah. seen the longer? certainly seen the growth yeah. Yeah. in the company. Absolutely. So pretty much half of Jellyfish's existence, you've been part of our yes. infrastructure. So. Ten years prior, I mean, you have you start you've been jellyfish maybe what sixteen years? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Apart from Phil, you're one of the you oldest don't look ones old there. Enough, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so what did what did like the the IT infrastructure look like before you started talking to Pixit? And then what was it? What was the catalyst that made you start looking at those sorts of technologies? Yeah, well, going back, you know, rewinding yeah. the dial ten years ago in the life of a in IT is, you know, quite quite a long time, mm -hmm. and yeah. so his, things have, you know, really come a long a long way over, over the past ten years since we, you know, since we first engaged with each other. Um, historically, we we were very uh, much, you know, Isilon and EMC and you know Blue Arc, and we really really saw Pixit as kind of like you know being completely software defined and being you know and really able to give us like a lot of really high performance storage that you know ten years ago just really wasn't possible yeah and so at this point you know for media workflows we um when it came time to actually renew you know the clusters that we had we just actually just replaced them and so that was really the start of our you know when start of the journey the start of the journey yeah. a long yeah. time ago so yeah. and, and it's amazing how you know even in the last 10 years how much the industry's changed you know as, yeah as we've seen of recent so massively so what were the cha I mean, that, there's always a new challenge every year, every month, every week, probably, um, in how fast technology advances. But what were the challenges at that time that made you have to, to have to rethink the way you were working? And I guess for you guys, what have been mm. at that point was this was the trajectory of where Pixar is now the same? Did you think you'd be here ten years ago? Um, no, I mean, I, I think when we when we first started, um, and you know, similar to the, the the way that we engaged with with Jellyfish, and you know, we've been a lot in the industry a lot longer mm -hmm. than just just on the Pixit side. And uh, but you know, you, you look at the way that the industry um, matures, and then it's a case of you know, well, what do you need to do from the underlying infrastructure? Because w whatever you do in a creative world, you're reliant on the infrastructure. You know, it's not what makes money, right? Mm -hmm. But you're still reliant on it to store the data to be able to serve the artists and all the different workloads. So when we first started, it was really about embracing that software defined approach where you're treating the physical like a like a commodity, right? Um, and, and it was about creating a single namespace to be able to deal with all the workloads in, in the creative world. If you look at where things have moved on now, um, you know, it, when you look at in that 10 years, you know, we've got now the public clouds that are used in such a big way. Um, the whole industry and the challenges continually, you know, that, that they continually change. But it, it certainly was the right start for us in the industry. Um, and it was companies like Jellyfish that we worked with that actually guided where we went in terms of our technology direction overall. Um, I mean, I think we're a completely 
different company in the way totally we approach things yeah. today. Um, and it's only really been down to, you know, the likes of the customers that we've worked with having to modernize um, the way that they work that, that's changed that, you know? I think the challenges back then really, when we came into it, you know, like a lot of that software defined stuff, it was a means to an end, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's how we met these challenges, which were pretty much at that time, and I think certainly how we got started talking. It's like, you know, there was, at the time you had all the appliance vendors where they were, they were, they'd gone through their life. They 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 done what they needed to do in the media market, and then they were moving on to other industries. Yeah. And so the support tax was coming up all over the place. Where they would come yeah. in and they'd say, "Hey, um, time for your support renewal," and the bill would be like that much when the expectation was. And 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 like also much, yeah. exactly to that point, it was very much forklift upgrade. Yeah. And and the way a lot of the. Um, the, the, the studios and the post-production, the VFX companies work, a lot of things were aligned to projects. So it, it, it was, you know, in, in a traditional way that you'd have IT budget and spend where you'd, you'd annualize it and you pretty much know year on year your growth. You know, as we've seen like with you guys, you can, you can get one or two projects where suddenly the company becomes three, four times plus the size. You know, now you can't budget for that in terms of the way that you grow. So it's, it's, it's you know, that, that was the thing that the, you can't go into these sort of forklift upgrades. You have to be able to embrace new technologies. You have to be able to adapt to what your customers require to be able to turn around the projects um, and being able to, you know, grow and shrink in re relation to, to the way that works. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been a really good mutual relationship because in one hand you know you'll bring in a cost model that's predictable to the market which is what it needs so you can grow when you need to um, but you always know what that growth requires on the other hand you have to be led by industry to to innovate to be able to meet the demands of industry mm. so yeah that, that that's our sort of view on it have you got anything to add jeremy yeah, I think I think you know going back when we first started, um, one of the big you know things that we really liked is that you know from a, from a technical perspective we could you know guarantee X amount of performance, yeah. and in that that was something you know that was really unheard of at the time from a from a from a software defined storage you know s solution, and. I remember we were kind of going from like a transition from SD to HD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and all of a sudden that was a massive, you know, d d jump in quality, jump in performance, jump in throughput needed yep. and yep. what that meant for rendering and all the rest of it. And now I, th I think we're kind of just coming out on the other end by going now from going from like, you know, HD to ultra HD. And so yep. we see the same thing happening again. And you tend to find, don't you, that you, although, for instance, when HD and 2K came in, it, it it was sort of it, there was a period of time that it took to for, for it to actually go into the VFX and the post production and that side of things. So you know, there's a delay of when it comes in, and I think we've seen that with Ultra HD, 4K. You know, we next now see the next innovation. So you're what we love about the media industry is you're always continuously pushing the boundaries, but then the workloads that you do um, are so broad. So it, you really get a, a spectrum of, um, you know, looking at dis different data profiles and there's always a new data profile that you have to take into account yeah. because of the way that the creative industry is always pushing boundaries. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that, that's, that's what's been great. Like HDR workflows is another example yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, always something. So you touched on it before about learning from industry, but I suppose it goes both ways. I mean, you as a CTO and the importance of the collaboration with your vendors and you with your clients. I mean, how, and I suppose this is a question for each of you, mm -hmm. how do you, what have you learned from your clients and what have you learned from your vendors? What, how important is that learning curve and that collaboration to build, to finally build on the perfect product? It can always be pushed, it's always gonna yeah. evolve, but what are those? What are the main pieces that have kind of built on that journey? Do you want to? Start? Yeah, sure. Well, well, I think you know, kind of collaborating, you know, with with you guys and you know, and other people in the industry, like just say, well, here's exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah. Like, like this is the, this is the exactly the challenges we're up against, um, and that's that level of engagement mm -hmm. is has been it has really been invaluable for I think for everyone in this in this industry and, yeah. and a lot of, like a lot of other, a lot of your other customers. Um, well, if you take a look at some of the other, you know, like the EMCs and, you know, a few of the other um, storage appliances we had 
previously, they they didn't have the understanding of the end to end solution in the sure. work in the workflow. So I think it's one thing that I've you know I think has been great is how we've been able to kind of like you know get together, have a phone call or Zoom call these days, and yeah, and, yeah. And, re and really just say that this this is um, this is this is where the industry is going. This is the scenario. And as you kind of alluded to, like the public cloud things has really changed things over the past several yep. years. Um, and this is where, you know, like software-defined solutions have really kind of shown into their own, yep. have really yep. come into their own, yep. in, into their own. Like, like you know, it, has, it has to be embraced now. Yes. It has to be embraced. And I, and I think one, one of the big gaps that, that, that we've seen, you know, when you go back over the years, is that there, there was a real disjointment between the creative side um, the operational side of the business, and then the underlying, if you like, te technology side. Um, and the way things used to work is that you would buy the underlying technology and infrastructure, and then as a creative workflow or, um, you know, operationally, you would have to make what you do fit within what you, what you implemented. Yeah. Whereas when you look at it in terms of the businesses that, you, that, the business that you're in, you, you, it's all about the creative side because that's where you make the money, right? That's what you do. Your clients are all creative. So I think what, what's what been great for us in terms of working with Jellyfish and, 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 a, and a large number of other um, companies in the industry is that by understanding the creative workflow, understanding the different profiles and what you want to achieve, it then guides us in terms of what you need to do to build an infrastructure and in a software defined way to meet that. Yeah. Uh, the, bless you. No, go ahead. Bless you, no, it's, it, it's through, through the years, you know, you, you'll, you know you'll, you'll give me a call and you'll say, hey, I've got this idea, I wanna, I wanna show you this new thing. Can I show you this new thing, Barry? Uh, <laughs> right. I'll say, yes, yeah, have, yeah, cool. Let's, let's, let's have a go, let's have a look and you'll, you'll this, here's the next big thing that's coming and I, and I always struggle at first I'm like, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at but I know it's, <laughs> it's gonna, it's, it's gotta be something cool and, and, and we get there in the end and, uh, and, uh, but, but what, for me, you know, as technologists, what's been great about working with Jellyfish and Derming in, the, in particular is that nine times out of ten it's kind of a window into what the industry is gonna yeah. do next yeah. before the industry knows it's gonna do it and and that for me is absolutely invaluable for us to, to give that back yeah. to our other customers um, and sometimes it works out differently to to uh, uh, you know the, the the reason behind whatever it is that you've, you've got going on uh, will will change but the outcome is usually exactly how you've predicted it and uh, that's been yeah, it's, it's been like, a, it's been a fun it's like journey. Having a crystal ball, so thanks. <laughs> Jeremy, the oracle. Well, yeah. <laughs> but but I think just to say, like, I mean, we we really see like technology, you know, and in certain if you have the certain technology pillars in place, I've used this analogy before, but basically, like, um, the the infrastructure, and the under IT is now acting as an enabler to do these jobs. Mm, that's what it is, rather yeah. than a barrier. Yeah, and so it has to be. We're, yeah, but that that this is the this is the way that we're in now, and. You know, and as you know, your your offerings have matured, and over time, to to embracing the public cloud. Well, what what does this mean for a workflow? What does this mean for for that? How how, how can we process these HDRs or yeah. or rather than having to oh let's take a look at like let's lower the renders to a lowering sampling rate. Let's hope no one yeah. notices or doing a bit of blurring and that that yeah. sort of stuff. But it's just how do you you know the infrastructure is now in a place where it allows us to really really export the highest sure. quality product. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, and, and fundamentally, it's you know it, when you look at the the sort of workflows that you guys have, um, it's you know it, it's about how that data moves through the workflow to to become that finished project that then you or that finished result that you then give back to your customers, mm -hmm. um, and and it's it's all about you know the the, the workflow and the, the the creative users that 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 are working to to that flow um, it's about you know making it so that whatever you have underneath it interacts and and it's it's that efficiency and automation of moving through the workflow mm -hmm. and and I think that's what's really important yeah something that's changed for us um, as well over the past of the 10 years is that the industry is a lot more regulated yes than than, than yeah. what it was that's basically yeah. ten, 10 years ago yeah absolutely and so 
And I think it's going to become more regulated. It's going to become more regulated. And so the, the amount of content being produced these days um, for traditional broadcast or film plus all of the streaming um, you know, services now, yeah. um, I think security is, is taken up, a, you know, massive. Is, is massively on, on everyone's you know, mind. And I know I, several years ago we spoke about, well, how, about, how can we do this in like multi-tenancy environments? Mm, so how yeah. can we do this without, you know, without siloing basically massive pools of well, resources? And also having, having, you know, three, four times the infrastructure than you need. Exactly. For yeah. the actual workloads that you're doing, absolutely. Exactly, because I mean, we still want to be very cost effective. And yeah. so I, I do think Pixit has done a, a really good job with the multi-tenancy stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and as you know, Charlie, we, we use that now. And so, but this is another example where Pixit are really engaged with the industry, not not just talk about speeds, speeds and performance, that sort of stuff, but also from a compliance perspective as well. Well, and, and, and it's, it's a really good point to raise because, you know, when you think where we started, everything was about performance, how much capacity you needed, um, you know, and then it was building, you know, those right storage infrastructures. Now it's completely different. Yes. You know, we, we, we almost say with storage now, it's like how big, how fast does it need to be and how much does it cost, right? That's about it with storage. It's now about, is it secure? Now I've got to automate in terms of the movement of data going through my workflow. Now I've got to take that outside of where I was in a single office like you guys, you know, originally. Now you're dealing with multiple locations. Mm -hmm. but initially that was in the UK, then it branched out and then it became global. So now you're moving content on a global basis. So collaboration within the company. Then you're also incorporating the public cloud because you've got to burst into that and use a lot of the benefits that you get from the public cloud. And then you're also collaborating with third parties as well, whether that's your customers or other people within the workflow chain. So storage where it used to be you know all the vendor and and a lot of the the, the vendors are still very similar to the, the traditional ones is how much storage can i sell you whereas now it's about you know how do I, I understand what you need and now it's about automating that so you know it, it, it's 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 going to cover all of those things around i need be i need multi-tenancy i need the security i need to be able to store stuff in an efficient way that i can either reutilize it or share it and then I've got to collaborate on a global basis, not just within my company or your company in this case, but also with it, with third party as well. So that's where it is. It, it's, it's a data play now mm -hmm. and it's about efficiency of data. And then it's also, it's having that flexibility to be able to say, I've got this new project, you know, who knows what format it's going to be or, you know, what what rendering it's going to require or, you know, the deliverables, etc. You have to then be able to embrace new technologies, but really quickly. Yeah. And and that's something that, you know, we've done that multiple times with you guys where, you know, yeah, where yeah. you're pushing the boundaries of things like, you know, we saw on one of the last projects, the, the rendering was just like out of this world. <laughs> um, yeah. And but we, we could quickly between us determine where the issues were, where that related to the infrastructure, what you needed to be able to achieve, and by working in collaboration with, you know, with some minor changes and embracing some new technology that could be incorporated quickly, enabled you to do that. And I, and I think that's, you know, that's what it's all about, that whole software-defined play. Yeah. I think that was going to be one of my questions. In creating this utopian <laughs> Utopia, studio yeah. of the future... Yeah, that's um, we're done now. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. it. Now we can mic drop. Um, and creating ever agile studio because like you say it's not confined to the four walls anymore it's either global or across whatever nation you're working in or in the cloud um, have you had to pivot like you what you I mean you kind of touched on it there with it's not just about creating storage anymore and power it's security and all these other elements has there been any huge tangents that you've had to go off on are you always having to be on your feet of knowing what's what's important and what are the trends that are coming? I think it's it's not so much... Recently, yes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. the, over the past 18 months. We and, certainly and it had to accelerate it. it. wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a pivot so much as a... No. Accelerate very, very quickly, right? Yeah. And, th and yeah. that that's really more the case. I mean, it, it was... Uh, I think we were in a, a nice place before COVID started. Uh, things were taken along with the development of what we, we were doing to, for, for the more global aspects mm -hmm. of things. But... When it hit, it's like, yeah, 
<laughs> we need it now. We mm. really need it now. And uh, so that that really, yeah, that, that that's uh, a, a couple pivots along the way in terms of, you know, we'll, maybe we're not going to work on that now, right? Mm. Because there's no point now, right? Uh, uh, but uh, but certainly the things that we were working on to, to help facilitate a lot of that stuff, we had to, to really put the, the pedal down. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it was, we, we, we started on the development cycle probably about four years ago, four and a half years ago, let's say, um, in a direction of where we were going. Um, I think one of the things that, that, that's, that's made us very different is the, the fact that the way that we've developed our underlying tool set is that we can change direction very quickly. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we were always focused in this, um, you know, it, it, it's almost like we had a slogan years ago, do, uh, what was it, um, do more with less. Mm -hmm. And it literally has come full circle because our whole philosophy is, which is crazy as a storage company, is kind of the less storage we sell you, the better we've done our job, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it was all about um, moving into this collaborative way. Now, with what happened over the last 18 months, the, the big thing that everyone had to do was get everyone working remotely, right? That was number one, because you, you couldn't yeah. just stop. Um, I think over the last, that, that so I bought six, for the first six, 12 months, I would have said. Um, and then more recently, over the last sort of six months or so, it's now looking at, well, okay, we've now got everyone working remotely. How do we do things in a more efficient way yeah. in terms of the way that we store and yeah. move data? Yeah. Because it's costly, right? Yeah. Um, so I think we were in. I think we were on the right path, but we've had to accelerate massively. Yeah. But I, w one thing I, I think you know is a hundred percent spot on is that if we weren't led by the customers from the industry that guide us in terms of what the needs are, yeah. then we wouldn't be able to get to yeah. anywhere yeah. near to where we get to. And that's where we have to pivot because yeah. you can be doing something in your roadmap that you think. Well, this is this is great, right? You know, this is mm. going to be fantastic. And then the industry says, no, no, this is how we need to do it, and you've got to be able to pivot. Yeah. So we we we've done that, um, but it, it's it, it's a changed world now. I think the next problem we're going to have is is finding talent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it, it, you think when when we used to a lot of these projects that you did, you might have two, three large projects going through the system. Now, with the amount of content that is being made, yeah. you're going to have to triple that. So, Yeah, well, the issue with talent as well, of course, is because people can work globally and no one wants to work in that campus style anymore. Yeah. They are all over the globe and they can work from home and they, can, they are offered everything because everyone's desperate for talent. So, I mean, that's an issue, yeah. you know, the VFX and animation yeah. industry and probably other industries are facing. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, that, that's going to be yeah. a big one. I think there's going to be like a lot of... Co you know, media companies out there now who had to pivot incredibly quickly. Yeah. Who, who were um, when the pandemic started, uh, and there was there was almost um, a, a very mad rush just to get people up and running in whatever way they yeah. could. So basically, whatever happens now, um, you know, as you guys know, Jellyfish was in a pretty good location, you know, position when, yeah. when, when the pandemic yeah. did hit. Yeah. That yeah. we were because we yeah because you were all, already on crystal that. ball again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, and so. You know, uh, you know, at Jellyfish, we want to put you know our our employees' health and safety first, and mm -hmm. so we you know started sending people home because but we were we were set up to do that. Yeah. You know, but a lot of places weren't, and so I think now that the dust has kind of settled and people you know have been working you know remotely uh, in one way or another. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be like a lot more refinement and just well, what what is the most intelligent way of yeah. of, of doing this? So I think there's going to be like more refinement. But also, um, just just to your point, I think, you know, it's kind of you know the landscape now has now changed. It's not this just this industry, but it's a, it, it, oh, it's, it, across it, it's across the board. Yeah. And so, when looking at like how software defined storage can help basically move the data from A to B intelligently, um, yeah. rather than just oh here's a, here's an NFS or an you know export. Well, and, and you you know when you think about the amount of data you're dealing with, which is just continuously increasing and exploding all the time. You, you can't just be copying data here, there, and everywhere. No. And that is the traditional model in the in the market, in especially in the media space, because you've got so many siloed elements within the workflow. You, so if you're not, and, and when you look at some of the software tools that that are coming through now, uh, you know, so forward thinking that that you can embrace and it can change that, but the infrastructure has to meet that. So you can't be 
replicating stuff and duplicating stuff everywhere because you, you don't have infinite budgets to say, well, you know, I'll buy a hundred petabytes and yeah. I'll be fine for the next four years. It's not realistic, right? Yeah. So it's all about, you know, not duplicating data. It's about automation um, to take away manual intervention so that those creatives, it, it, it needs to be seamless. And, yeah. and, and I think that's the, the next step. Yeah, so again, just for a lot of those people out there just to kind of refine the, the way that they're doing this to be yeah. to work smarter, not necessarily harder. Sure. Yeah, no, that, and that's it. But, you, you know, you look at a lot of the, the big companies out there in the industry, you can't just say, right, we're going to get rid of all our no. infrastructure and start again. You've no. got to transition. Yeah. So, you know, not only are you trying to focus on you know, incorporating these new workflows and the, and the type of projects that you're dealing with, but you've also got to, um, you, you know, you've got to be realistic in terms of how you transition. Um, and that's a big challenge as well. And that's something we've been really focused on. So, yeah. yeah. Did you find that companies previously that were quite wedded or were skeptical of this new agile cloud hybrid working before COVID suddenly were knocking on your door? Um, I think it it was stuff that we like like I said earlier we were already on that transition, mm. and I think I I thought the industry handled it really well in terms mm. of to get everyone working remotely and and I think there were there was a degree of help because there was no filming there was no live mm. events so you know it, it, there was a lot of sort of animation and and projects that were already gone through that process so there there was a degree of a gap, but now we're we're inundated. Because mm. now everyone's looking at, I need to be efficient. I need this global collaboration, and I need to do it on you know anywhere. Mm. If I yeah. want to spin something up in the Far East, I need to be able to do it. I need to be able to do that quickly. I mean, that's, that's what you guys have done. I don't think there's really. I mean, very few companies and customers that we work with are uh, not sure. Skeptical is the right word. There, I think it was. There's been some skepticism over it, whether or not the technology was ready, mm -hmm. but everyone's bought in, right? Yeah. They're like, this is the right thing to do. We know that someday this is gonna this is gonna happen, and we're gonna be a part of this. Uh, but maybe now it's not the right time. Or there a lot of proof of concepts, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff, but not a lot of execution. And yeah, I think that's that's really the difference. That every, everyone saw, everyone sees the transition to that type of working, uh, saw it in advance, but didn't see that it would become a necessity right? yeah. mm -hmm. like that. And, and, and I think that's, that's really the big difference. And, and now what we're having, so we, you know, we're, we're not getting loads of calls about remote working per se, but we, uh, but we are getting loads of calls about facilitating, you know, that, that, that um, collaboration, you know, collaboration and, uh, and, and how on-prem fits into that whole mm. scenario and, 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 uh, and uh, what that looks like with my, my eight remote sites and my, my, my two on location sites yeah. and my, mm. that, that that's been more the the thing and and uh, a lot of that's covid related but i think really mostly it's just people realizing we can do this now so we're going to mm. right? yeah and, and that's really most of where where the the uh the well, I mean, we're it, is coming it, from is just you know it, there, there's there's no choice in the yeah. industry it has to transition and the legacy ways of doing it just don't work yeah. Correct, anymore yeah. they just don't work and you know, if you want to, if you want to work on three times, four times the amount of projects that you were, same with the content creators. If they want to, if they want to create that much more content, then you've got to be able to deliver it. And the yeah. only way you're going to do that is do it more efficiently. We're seeing it with, you know, the, all the stuff that's going on with virtual sets. I mean, it's it's just it's game changing. But you've still you've still got to get that through the system. You you know you you can't say, um, you know, we're going to take three times the amount of projects on so now we're going to take on another thousand creatives mm. yeah. you've got to be able to manage and deal with all that so it, it, the industry has to transition i think it's being forced to transition yeah, with agree. the content war that we've got yeah. um and i think from a technological side the, the, a lot of the ways that it's been done in the past from from a lot of the engineering teams they have to change um, and they have to change to meet the creative workflow and the creative needs, mm. whereas before it was very disjointed. Yes, I, I think what we were saying before, Barry. I think basically um, people were definitely seeing that you know the, oh we'll do a POC here, we'll do a POC mm -hmm. there, yeah. but I think COVID has been a massive accelerant yeah. for basically yeah. a, you you must be working in this yeah. way, otherwise you're you're not going to be working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and and 
I, I, the technology has really matured over the past t ten years, simply since you know since jellyfish started you know looking at this several years ago. Uh, but even since the you know the start of the pandemic, the entire like the multiple different things in the different stack have, have progressed massively. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was talking to someone uh, the other day, they say about like roughly like. 10 years of R&D has been done in 18 months, yeah. basically on this sort of stuff. And, yeah. and um, you know, I really do believe that we're now kind of at a time where the, where the, the technology is more than capable of it. We've got, like, faster connectivity. We, yeah. You know, 5G is now being launched. And so yeah. instead of, you know, you know, if you rewind the clock 20 years ago, you used to have to spend, like, you know, 20, 30, 40 grand on some sort of big SGI machine. Now you can do it on a dial laptop yeah. sitting on a yeah. beach. No, absolutely. And it's, you know, in the, the in, but again, this is basically, you know, the infrastructure and the infrastructure choices that, that people like like Jellyfish make, they allow us to basically to, to, to reap the benefits of this. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but, you know, if you rewind the clock back 10, 15 years, the technology wasn't ready. No. But now... Now, now it is. I, th I think uh, another blocker, even just two years ago, uh, I, th I think the uh, one of the creatives have uh, given them the choice. Do you want to work at home, uh, and maybe you'll get an occasional blip in the viewing because you're working over the internet over your kitchen Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah. I think the answer would be at that time, you know, categorically no. Or mm -hmm. you know, ca can we do reviews from, you know, with you sitting uh, 600 miles away? Or However far it is, and the answer would be categorically no. There's no way that that can happen. We need to have. I think there's a bit more leniency now. I think mm. There's a bit more acceptance that that, that is a perfectly acceptable That's way fine. of working. And if we we get too high quality, then there's we still have a premises to to to, to visit. So. Yeah. I think that's been an issue that you face certainly at Jellyfish is that artists. It's not. Maybe it's just the new. And if anything goes wrong, you're going to blame the new thing yeah. that's caused it. So it'll be like, oh, this has all gone wrong, and it's it's this new. It's because we're working from a data center. Yeah. It's because we're working from a cloud. Yeah. And it's change. Yeah. 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 But then, you know, since everyone had to work from home, oh my god, Jeremy, you're the best person yes. in the world. How have you done this? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No. I did just want to say to everyone attending, we are doing a Q and A as well. So please do get your questions in. Um, We've got about 25 minutes left, so um, yeah, fire away and we'll be able to answer them. Back to you guys, I forgot to say in the introduction. No worries. Um, for you, building this agile studio, and you did it, you know, we launched our first virtual studio in 2015, 16. Uh, what's really important to you is the collaboration between all the tech vendors and bringing them together. What was it? So you found Pixit and they were doing something different from Isolon and doing what you needed and what you saw. How, how do you find these companies? But how do you, how, what is it that, <laughs> that you kind of bring together these companies in a harmonious way and then you've got this studio? Well, I suppose I spent a lot of time online doing a lot of, <laughs> a lot of research. Um, obviously, you know, we met, you know, um, you know, FIP, 10, 15 years ago, yeah. um, and b b I think it just, again, just that, you know, you guys were willing to collaborate, and, uh, you know, much like some of the other technology vendors that we use, I mean, they're willing to, like, really engage mm -hmm. with us, and so, I mean, I, I find myself spending a lot of time talking with different um, technology, you know, providers in, in, in the discipline that they're in, and just saying, well, how can we work together, how can we make this better, this is what sure. we're doing, um, I remember working with the guys with um, Teradici about Wacom support. Yeah, I said yeah. I said people can work remotely, but I said if 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 uh, if a painter can't have pressure sensitivity on their pen, then the, the entire thing kind of falls yeah. down. Yeah. yeah, and so I suppose I just I guess I personally, I mean, I actually get satisfaction out of working with different people and just like, how can sure. we make the this solution this solution better and then passable yeah. by by the end users. So I guess, uh, and then it all comes and it, it, it assembles into one. One oh, thing. Kind of the Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a big question. In the past, I'm going to say 20 years because we are celebrating Jellyfish's yeah. 20th birthday. What do you think is the biggest technological advancement in the VFX animation industry specifically to end, which is, which brings us to where we are now? And you can each answer that. Mm -hmm. That might take off a bit of time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, well, I, I think going back 20 years, 
the landscape is completely um, changed. So if you wanted to work on, say, one of the big, big um, films, like a Star Wars or whatever else, there, there was only so many people, mm -hmm. like studios in the, in the world, that could actually have the um, just the raw grunt just, just, just to do that. But I think really as the industry has matured and as has changed, um, and thanks to, to the advent of software-defined storage, the public cloud, and, you know, um, being able to work remotely, um, it's a lot of different facilities now can now instantly scale up yeah. and have incredibly, like they can inc have incredible, there's a raw firepower yeah. just to frankly get that job out the door and then simply to potentially, you know, collapse it back down or reallocate those resources. 20 years ago, that was not possible. Yeah. You, you know, you, you literally had to ha sign, you know, have your own power station frankly yeah. to power this sort of yeah. stuff and then you have the people to maintain it, and then you have to you know keep it busy because you don't want it sitting there doing nothing and so i think in the past 20 years it has completely changed the game and so if, if you've got like a you know solid robust workflow and um, best practices being followed there's really no limit to mm -hmm. what to what you can do as as that facility um, yeah. to work on whatever project you want no matter how complex but again you know we're seeing that um it's being all the technology is it's it's allowing that to happen i think that's a result of the technology really maturing over the yeah. past 20 years because um when i started at jellyfish that was not the case yeah there, there was you know that there was, was different different approach a different approach and it was different and it was a different time so i think and i think that's one of the biggest things that's changed in in this space is um it's just the actual sheer scalability now yeah i'm gonna be really boring and say yeah, pretty much that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I, I think the um, try and be difficult as I can and controversial <laughs> with this stuff, but but no, I, 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 th I think the biggest shift has, has been and more more in the last ten years has been the the public cloud um, and the way that they've approached it. You know, with, with, you know the Amazons, the Microsofts, and the Googles. I think it's changed the dynamic of acceleration of development. Um, I think it's it's completely flipped the traditional technology industry on its head and almost put a rocket up it to mm. modernize mm -hmm. um and you know because when you look at what the likes of the public cloud hyperscalers have done and the way that they built data centers and and you know and and the way that they did infrastructure they've completely you know completely yeah. changed the dynamic um i think in turn what's really positive about that is I think the innovation that we see on the software side in the industry is just, you know, in terms of what you can deliver has just been phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't put that all down to the public cloud, I'd, but I'd, I'd put it down to the fact that development teams can collaborate on a, on a global scale to be able to achieve that. Um, but I think the, what we're seeing now is, you know, those traditional technology giants that have been in the industry a long time you know, they weren't going to lie down forever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and just say, here you go, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, off you go. And we're now seeing those businesses completely change and they're embracing the, the, the change and they're coming back with, with some, you know, fantastic innovation. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dynamical shift on the technological side or the technology side. Um, but I also think that industry and not just the media industry we're seeing it across the mm. board you know life science mm -hmm. machine learning and ai um what can be achieved so much quicker than what it could 5 10 15 20 years ago mm -hmm. that's that's what that's what's changed massively and you do work in other industries media yeah. and entertainment isn't your only industry do you see is that a positive for you? Because you can see different things happening. They're, they're all handling a massive amount of data. It, yeah, absolutely. And it, and I mean, one of the reasons we love the media industry is because number one, it's the most heterogeneous environment out there. You know, you're dealing with every data profile. You're dealing with you know such a vast range of every operating system. You know, and, and anything. Um, you know, it, it brings out so many challenges, but also when you think about data management, the media industry is by far the most mature out of any of the big data. And it verticals. doesn't believe that it is, which is the fun. No, which, which yeah, is I, crazy. I thought it was yeah. finance. No, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, when you look at even going back to you know, 
film cans and tapes, right? Mm. Metadata w w was 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 still understood and dealt with then, although in a you mm. know very different way. Um, whereas I think what what we've seen, um, you know, the other the other areas. Sorry, I was going to say with the media industry, it's the one area that you can prove performance. Because we always say a slow video is not video, right? It's, it's not. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and and that that's another great thing. But when we go into the other verticals that we deal in, we can very quickly understand because we're not creatives, right? Our, our company isn't creative. We're engineering. You know, we're engineers. So when we go into other industries, we can very quickly relate those workloads, those data profiles, and also the way that they're managing data for all the stuff that we've learned from the media industry. And and I think. A lot of vendors that started in media and then forgot or moved away from the media industry because you know it, 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 there's there's more money to be made in other mm -hmm. verticals. Um, I think it's crazy because you will always continue to learn from the media industry. Yeah. We there's this cycle that we go through between those other industries that we work with and, and this, right? and, and it's always been this way, right? It, it's that that whole data management aspect, that whole efficiency aspect, which you know. Margins are so tight in this industry that you've got to be efficient. And who is ever more efficient down the road is going to get the business and so on and so forth. And uh, that's not always happening in the other spaces. So the that that type of thing, right, is where we get a lot of value in putting back into those other industries that we work with who may not be necessarily, you know, they don't necessarily need that. They don't necessarily need to be more efficient. But if they can be, then... Hey, the happy days, right? Mm -hmm. um, and out of the back of that, uh, particularly within the research sectors that we work with, there's constant innovations in performance. You know, and uh, that's kind of the fun stuff for us sometimes. And we get to bring that back into mm -hmm. the industry that we're with here. And that, yeah, that's absolutely. the way it's always been. It's just gone on a sort of circle every uh, every every year. There'd be a, a, a new way to share between back and forth. And that's certainly how yeah, we that's started. A, that's a really yeah. good point. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we see in you know the real high performance compute side. I mean, it's bleeding edge in yeah. terms of the performance is just mm. another level. Um, so you can take a lot of that and you can bring it back into the, the media space. Yeah, it's very IT driven. You know, it's very fees and speeds. Mm. Yeah. Um, we get to have a lot of fun in that industry because we can go in and talk about workflow. What's a, what's a workflow? <laughs> that thing, yeah. you know, that, that thing that you do to get your finished outcome, that, that, let's look at that. And people don't, they just fall on the floor. They don't know what to, yeah. know what to think. But it's good. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So. Jeremy, as it's been touched on, you've got quite the innovative brain <laughs> and you pushed boundaries really for Jellyfish. So we're, an, we're an independent company, so it helps to be able to do that. What was Phil, so Phil's the, our CEO and founder, what was his reaction in 2014 or 2013 when the cloud was still in its infancy for the um, media industry? When you say I want to start looking at these technologies and I want to completely overhaul the IT infrastructure, I think at the time it wasn't its infancy, like um, seven, eight years ago, yeah. however, however long that was. Um, but I think with, I think with Phil, he could see the potential opportunity that mm. that it, that it would that it would bring, you know, the, the company. Um, and as long as that, as long as those changes would be able to. Um, Help the company and help the artists, or or basically make them work better or, or have more options. So, cloud rendering was a you know is a good example, and now it's you know remote workstations. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, I think he well I, I don't think I know, but he can definitely see how how that has been positively affected you know the mm -hmm. company, and it's and it's really has helped us to basically work on the projects that we've been able yeah. to work on, yeah. you know today. And um, so yeah, so I guess it's basically just. Again, I was just saying earlier, all of this stuff is acting as a further enabler for us, mm. for for the people that we hire to do great work. Yeah, I suppose it takes an element of trust, though, because it was quite unknown. There weren't really other studios. No, doing it, it. it was it was yes. Yeah, so there was a lot of <laughs> a lot of testing, a lot of be like getting getting random people and say, hey, what, what do you think? That, what do you think of this? Does, does it work? And and um, but yeah, it, it was. You know, so there was a lot of there was a lot of like um, engagement with basically several people yeah. just to make sure that we had several um, key people buy into the solution just to make just to make sure it works. So I remember before we opened up the first um, mm -hmm. virtual offices that we we did extensive testing before um, 
before we open that just to make mm. sure the, the user experience was good and um, and this was this was this is using technology that'd be seven eight years ago you mm -hmm. know now yeah. and yep. so just to just make sure that they they had sign off and then you know Phil make sure that they were happy and then that that led us to to going down and and we benefited because yeah. we 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 really the first virtual office that we set up really benefited because it was the same workflow and the, it was the same everything people just sat down and logged in yeah I think the you know at the time you were, you were one of the few that was doing that and there's the you, you definitely had an advantage in that you know, there's a lot of vendors ourselves included that you know pass or fail there's a lot to be gained from participating in that exercise so there was the, tons of buy-in on this I mean mm. I think when, when you were uh, going around and uh, evangelizing on it, it, it was, uh, you know, will it work? I have no idea. But it's easy to, to not easy, but it's, you're not having to invest in all this in physical stuff yeah. in order to have a go. And, and, uh, and the, the science out, I don't know, out of the back of it, science, if you will, um, was, was going to be really interesting either way. So I, I think, um, it was a you, you pinned it just at the right time. For yeah. Sure. Well, we all we also we also really pushed a lot of the other vendors that we that we worked really? with as well. Yeah. Just yeah. as like, right. guys, this you know we need this you know X Y and Z, and you know so there there was a lot of engagement as well with 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 other with yeah. the other vendors we work on just to make sure that it could do X Y and Z, mm. and, and we got it to a point where yeah. it could. Yeah, but you look at the benefit, the return oh, it's, it's on it. Huge, yeah. huge. I mean, you know, I mean, how big did you grow over COVID? It was, I think we got up to four, three fifty to four hundred. But that was like, you know, you you grew. Oh, we, through, yeah, through that yeah. period yeah. where we hired two hundred and fifty people uh, yeah. from twenty different countries. Right. Yeah, during COVID. So you know, it shows what's possible, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that's something to be said to all three of you. Really, is you know, Jellyfish is successful, has been around for twenty years thanks to Phil and his business acumen, but also we wouldn't, possibly we'd still be here, but we wouldn't be the size, we wouldn't have the ambition that we would have yeah. without that technology infrastructure and without Jeremy's vision and you guys and all the vendors that he's brought on to be able to create this agile studio, because we would still be that VFX shop in Soho having to turn down jobs because we don't have a, a, a you know, Comp room that's big enough to put another rack in. You yeah. know that yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. and that's and that and it's like you were saying earlier, Jeremy. That's what's changed. You know, yeah. you mm -hmm. you can now pretty much scale as big as you need to. Yeah. Um. You know, the next problem, and I, I know you're doing it across the globe now in terms of where you get people from on the creative side. But um, you know, the the, the next problem is going to be having enough talent around well, the globe. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and that's one we can't uh, fix, but. Yeah, no, but it's certainly demonstrated that it's worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Let's just check and see if there are any questions in. There isn't, so please get typing. We've only got ten minutes left, and we're going to carry on chatting if you don't. Um, next one. So we've spoken about the biggest. What's been the biggest change in the past twenty years? What do you see um, the future for the M and E industry? What's going to be the big change? Is it just a slow evolution of what's happening now, or is there going to be a big change. We'll go this way this sure. time. Change it up. I th it's a tough one. I, I think I think there's still a long way to go to be able to create that global from you know whether it's a virtual studio or virtual production to the traditional on set location where you've got that flow all the way on a global basis in an automated way. And I think that's that should be the focus for the next three to five years. It's making sure that um, you know the the studios right the way through to all of the you know um, the VFX post production. Everyone involved in the chain is that they're creating those um, those software automated workflows, and then it's a, then for the underlying infrastructures to meet those workflows yeah. to be able to move data in line with that wherever it needs to be. And and that's that's what we see the next three to five years certainly and and probably beyond. Mm. I think you'll still get tradition. Well, it's, yeah, it, it's it's just in, in general. It just the, the innovation it will all be software driven. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, it always has been right uh, the, for, with, the, with that type of thing. But it, it's it's a little different now in that you know, it's now that things exist outside of that that on premise bubble, even if it's 
you know, multiple locations of, of an on-premise bubble. It's still, nevertheless, an on-premise bu bubble. And you know, a lot of the new uh, apps that are coming out, the way that they operate, and their, their business model will tend to be more, um, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I forget the word, uh, subscription-based, where you go and launch from a, a yeah. from the cloud. And, and, and interacting with that can be, you know, it's really easy, but it can also be difficult to integrate into your environment, but if you can figure it out, there's a lot to be gained, and then there's the stuff that still runs on-prem, and there's the stuff that runs both on-prem, and all this different stuff that needs to interoperate together. They're, they're, I, it's going to be a hard. I don't play see here, that consolidating anytime soon. I see that expanding more and more, and and I think that's really, that's where the, the, the next challenges and next innovations are going to be, is, is who, the people that build the connectors. Yeah. The, the stuff that connects the apps, that connects the users to their apps, that mm. connects the apps to the storage, that connects the storage to the other storage, and you know, all there's just the stuff that connects this to the other stuff. I think that that's that's really um, that's really where the, the all the work's going to have to go into now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I really I I agree. I I really think that we're going to see um, like a lot of set standards come out that's going to really help collaborate. So, um, in, in the media world, there's something called uh, USD or Universal mm -hmm. Scene Description, and this is going to be kind of it's kind of like basically a, um, let me the best way to explain it is just basically. A, um, a file yeah. that is supported by every DCC application, yeah. and and it, it also is going to encourage like a lot more collaboration between different facilities as well as different applications. Mm -hmm. It's got to. Yeah. Well, it's going to, and I know um, I know Autodesk is you know is you know making really seriously looking into this. So I, th I think we're going to see like a lot more of adoption of open source, yeah. um, you know, stuff and, le and less proprietary. Um, and, and, that, and that's yeah. been one of the big challenges in the industry. If you, you've had these, these legacy proprietary platforms that don't collaborate with anything outside of their business. That's, that's it, yeah, it, it was a walled garden yeah. approach. But we're even seeing, we are now seeing some, some of these big vendors now yeah. embracing these solutions, embracing, you know, tech, um, you know, these file formats. And what that allows us to do, and it, it allows us basic engagement with basically, say, a, another studio, another person that doesn't even use the same application stack that, that you do, but you, can yeah. use, but you can use the same data. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's it's really encouraging to kind of see the industry kind of going to, to more that way because you you don't really have to reinvent you know there's no point in reinventing the wheel, no. um, which I think you know 10, 15 years ago that's that's what yeah. was happening. Everybody had their own wheel. Everyone had their own wheel, and so but now there's this thing called GitHub, and you just pull it down and clone yeah. it, and you know contribute back, and you know. So I think that's going to be one of the biggest, you know, kind of a big change happening over the next one. I think, it's, and I think it's exciting. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just going to allow, you know, a sense of collaboration that maybe wasn't necessarily there before, or a lot easier to collaborate because there was no there, got, there right? was no middleware, you yeah. know, doing the doing the stuff in between. So I, I think that's going to be I think that's going to be a big a big thing kind of going forward really. Yeah. Well, you're usually right, so if I, <laughs> if I said, yeah, I'm Well, we, we've got, like, you know, standards like, you know, Material X, USD, uh, Timeline I.O., and the thing is that we're now seeing, like, the, we're now seeing, you know, like, uh, the Foundry adopting these standards. We're seeing Autodesk adopt these yeah, standards. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, yeah, which is fantastic. And, and you know, Pixar has been a, behind a lot of this, and ILM has been around behind a lot of this. And they've just, they're just open sourcing, you know, this stuff. And yeah. a lot of different, you know, places like Shockgrid now and... Uh, a lot of it, they're they're in building building upon these standards rather than basically trying to make their own version yeah. of it because you, you know usually if you get like one of the one of the major uh, VFX or animation studios behind it like s some in the U.S. it's going to get a lot, gain a lot mm -hmm. of traction. Yeah, and I you know I, I think that's that's really exciting. You know that's really exciting to see these projects really come into their own. And it's if we were to wind the clock back like say 10, 15 years, I I don't believe like they 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 just didn't have as much. No traction as they do today. No, no, no. It's uh, too we hard. We have yeah. <laughs> too hard then. Yeah. three <laughs> minutes left. Sorry. I'm sorry, just going to interrupt you. <laughs> we have three minutes left. No questions. So you, if you've got any final words on your relationship with Jellyfish and your relationship with your favourite memory, got one minute each. Oh, okay. That's putting us on the spot, isn't it? <laughs> do I have to start? Can you start that way this time? Barry. <laughs> In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were with the ham yard, and you were doing that live demo. I think it was the ham yard. I was at the HPC Microsoft event. Yeah, so you, you're doing the you're doing the live you're doing one of your, your yeah. demos where the core count would start. Oh yeah, yeah. That was awesome watching that. That was great. 
I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> But there was my stuff on the on the uh, on the back end, and I thought that, that, that was just great. That's not my favorite memory of our relationship, but that that I, I always uh, proud moment. Yeah, very yeah. proud moment for me working with you on that. So yeah, that was. Uh, no, that I, was I, I I think my well, I, I don't know if it was my, my favorite memory, but it was certainly one of the most refreshing ones. Is when you finished the the last project <laughs> <for DreamWorks. laughs> that yeah. was DreamWorks uh, because that was a monster, yeah. and it and it and I think it demonstrated that. Um, the model worked, so that was that was really positive. Um, I thought that was great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, favorite memory? It's just it's it's hard. I think it's probably just like you know the regular meetups really, and just to say you know like hey we've got this cool idea, then you guys actually like listen, yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure. It, yeah. you know, and and then we kind of get going. I remember that that demo we did and that. First, fun, first yeah. live demo in front of like a lot of people. You yeah. know, there's not, you know, nothing like a bit of added pressure there, um, but it, but it, it, it you know it, it did work, and I think it's you know I think it's just kind of like, um, you know we like to try and push the envelope, and, and then obviously you know we put, help push it together if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Then, yeah, likes to push it too. Yeah, so um, well, it certainly helped. You know what we've learned from you guys, it, our direction in terms of where we've we've gone. So, you know, it's been been really positive. Yeah. And you guys also do some very good barbecues as well. Yeah. But yeah. I'm yet to be invited to <laughs> yeah. one, but we won't come on to that. Well, you do, Barry. I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I turn up. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. No, thanks for having us. Thank you. It sounds like a fun and fruitful relationship. <laughs> and thank you very much for everyone attending. I hope you have learned lots um, and can see what the future of the industry is um, please keep an eye out on our social media and on Pixit social media we'll be sharing this and um, we've also got a solutions architect brief um, to share with you guys as well so you can learn about the exact work uh, we've done together in a bit more detail thanks and bye and have a great weekend <laughs>